So you want a new and posh SUV, but you don't want to pay the premium to access one of the market's upmarket brands. Well, I might just have the car for you because it comes from a new brand to the UK market. It is the very posh Genesis GV70. The GV70 faces the likes of BMW's X3 and Mercedes-Benz's GLC in the premium SUV class. And when it's equipped with the 304 horsepower 2.5 litre petrol engine of the car you see here, it also faces sportier models like the Porsche Macan and Jaguar F-Type. This class is absolutely packed with talented options, but what helps the GV70 stand out from the crowd is its £39,450 starting price, which undercuts practically everything else in this segment by some margin. At a glance then, the GV70 looks a bit like a premium bargain. But of course, to access the very poshest of GV70, you have to tick a few options boxes. This car, for example, it doesn't use the entry 2.2 litre diesel engine, but rather the 304 horsepower 2.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine. That brings its starting price up to 41,000 pounds. But there are many more options. So if I just refer to my notes, this car also has for £4,190 the Innovation Pack and then it has the Comfort Seat Pack for just shy of 1500 quid, and the Napa Leather Sports Seat Pack for 2750 quid. You still with me? Throw in a top spec sound system, an electronic limited slip differential and some swanky red paint and that starting price, well, it's been pushed right up to £54,540. That's a bit more money I think we can all agree. But crucially, it still undercuts many of this car's main rivals. So does that leave it as the best value premium SUV out there? Only one way to find out. Before we get to that, let me just take this opportunity to highlight how many SUVs we have on Cinch, with everything from fully petrol to fully electric models available for delivery or collection. So make sure you check out cinch.co.uk before searching for your next car. Oh, and I'd also like to say thanks to everyone who subscribed to our channel in recent weeks. We have lots more content in the pipeline, so don't forget to click that subscribe button if you like what you're watching. So, how does the GV70 drive? Well, some of it feels a bit like a Range Rover Velar, some of it feels a bit like a posh, nice crossover, and some of it feels like a properly, properly luxury car. Let's start with the ride, because this car has some really cool technology to help it ride a bit better. It has the system which uses the cameras up front to monitor the road ahead, which slackens off the suspension if you come up to big potholes and drain covers, but it also enables the car to then tighten up if it doesn't see anything up ahead and it allows you to not roll around so much. It doesn't have to always be soft and squishy. And the system does work. It's not completely invincible. I mean, there are sections of road that I've crossed over today where I should have been thrown around in the seat and it just ironed out the bumps perfectly. But then smaller sections of road or smaller sections of pitted roads where you have very high frequency bumps and cracks you do get jiggled around a bit but it feels like a feels like a luxury car it almost rides like a Range Rover honestly I do mean that it's a nice nice thing and that's in town and in the country and on the motorway as well it doesn't feel like a proper SUV in the sense that the steering's quite fast it feels more like a car in that regard um, the steering rack the ratio of steering so the amount I have to turn the wheel to get the car to move around on the road is not a lot it does react quite keenly to the front end and the steering is definitely set with a road bias in its engineering. But I like that. It means around town, I can steer through bends with minimal effort. And on the motorway, it's just small corrections needed to keep the car tidy and straight. And again, on country roads like this, you can just drive it naturally like it's a car. You don't have to think about its size or its mass. I'm coming up to a corner now and I just turn the wheel as if I'm in a much smaller car. Now it does corner really nicely. It's got this the keenness of the front end and then the suspension's ability to tense up a little bit around the bends means it actually goes around corners with real, real vigor and it actually feels somewhat car-like in its cornering. And that's why I keep mentioning the Velar because this, the Velar is the, the SUV out there where you've got the luxury. It's a bigger car than this. It's a heavier car than this as well. And it is a slightly more luxurious car with all of its tech, but there are some, some factors of this car that do feel a little bit like that Land Rover. And that's a big compliment to this Genesis. And I don't think it's by coincidence. I think they've gone after exactly that market. And a perfect piece of evidence for that are the engine choices that are offered here in the UK. You've got a 2.2 litre diesel. That's a good engine if you want a bit more efficiency, but the 2.5 litre petrol is the one most buyers are likely to go for because petrol is, is king again. I mean, when it comes to petrol and diesel anyway. And so that 2.5 litre petrol engine that's in this car, it's turbocharged, it has 304 horsepower. It gives the car decent muscle. You know, we can sprint to 62 mile an hour in not much over six seconds. So it's pretty quick, but it does mean this engine is quite thirsty. 
the way this engine pulls is not in a thump you in the back kind of way. It's more like how I'd imagine rowing in a big, big boat would be. If you've got a big load of people rowing together, initially getting away, it can feel quite lardy. But as soon as you're moving, the momentum just stays and it rolls along and it goes down a motorway or carries pace through corners like a juggernaut. But the brakes are good, so it's not a runaway juggernaut. You can bring this thing to a stop quite quickly. Powerful brakes, good pedal feel on the brakes. Because you've got that quick reacting front steering as well, you always feel confident with the car, even though it is pretty big and some country roads in the UK can be narrow. It never feels like this car is aloof or out of control. You go over crests, you come around corners and it just steers confidently and it leaves you feeling confident as well. Now the car comes with an electronically controlled limited slip differential but unlike in sports cars or more sporty SUVs it's not here because it wants to enhance your performance and pace but rather because it wants to improve the grip. This is of course a four-wheel drive car. It does have terrain modes. If I click into the terrain modes now you have snow, you've got mud and you've got sand. So you're going to have traction in these slippery scenarios. You also do have multiple drive modes as well. You've got Comfort Sport and Sport Plus, but the car doesn't feel particularly suited to Sport Plus. I mean, it, in it increases the responses of the accelerator. It weights up the steering, but not in a way I feel necessary. But the car still feels quite top heavy and still feels quite, well, like a big SUV, which it is. So let's get out of that mode. Let's stick it back into Comfort which is where this car feels most natural, where it feels like its true self. This is the mode I've driven in all day long and it just suits the GV70 down to a T. BMW's X3 kind of has to do two jobs. Because it's a BMW, they always have to drive with that slightly sportier character, but Genesis isn't a brand here for sports reasons. It's here to produce premium cars. And so this is able to just relax into its natural character. As a whole package, it just feels really cohesive. The steering weighting when you're in the normal and comfort modes, the accelerator, the way it's quite elastic with this motor, it doesn't ask for a kick down straight away from the gearbox in the normal modes anyway. It allows the engine to lean into its torque band and just the way the brake pedal is nice and regulated, everything feels really nicely done. Premium, high end, so well finished. This Genesis is really refined as well. I mean, the engine, it does quieten down on the motorway and the road noise and the wind noise are really, really quite low. It means you can coast along and talk at low volume with your passengers. And it also means the car feels even more premium. I think low volumes are what really separate the top end cars from the lower end cars. And somehow Genesis has managed to make its relatively affordable car feel like a really quite posh car. Low volumes for outside noise. You shut that door and it feels like you're in a library. It's a very, very nice place to spend a long time. This car's technology also leaves you really impressed. It comes with loads of standard equipment, but the most useful feature I've used today is the blind spot monitoring system. Now, it's got all the usual bits that you expect. There's a little bit that flashes up in the mirror when something's in your blind spot. The head-up display ahead also shows an image of the car with a little exclamation mark next to the position where something is in your blind spot. But the coolest feature, I think, and the one I liked this morning when I was running through the, uh, the rush hour traffic of London was this blind spot monitoring camera system. When I indicate to change lanes or move over, the display ahead of me, the dial on the side of where I'm indicating changes to show me a view of the blind spot. So I literally have a camera view of what's next to me. It's such a useful feature, not quite as effective or not quite as high end as say Land Rover's features, which are full 3D, but Given that this car's price bracket is below the models that get that on alternative models, this thing feels like it comes packed with technology for money that is fairly respectable. It just drives itself, really. Oh, actually, talking of driving itself, it literally does almost drive itself as well because it has the technology carried over from Hyundai. It has a steer assist system and also a dynamic cruise control system, which means you can take your foot off the accelerator and keep your hands on the wheel but not have all of the weight of the steering as a responsibility for you. The car just steers itself along a route. It's a very effective system. It really does help the miles disappear on a long drive. But the big negative is the fuel consumption. Unfortunately, if you're looking for a cheap way into the premium SUV world and you want a car that's cheap to run as well as cheap to buy, well, this ain't it. But 
there is an electric version of this car coming out later this year. The GV70 will have an electric model, so perhaps that will be the best all-rounder, especially for those of us who live in cities or don't do enormous amounts on our daily commutes. So clearly this is not an SUV for sporty driving, but rather something to be comfortable and cosseted in. And no clearer is that than in the interior. It is absolutely lovely. Starting with the digital infotainment systems. Normally you don't like too much infotainment system in a luxury car like this. I think sometimes we want buttons and we want to be able to feel like there's a bit of analog control here, but Genesis has really nailed it, I think, when it comes to the mix of analog and digital. Take, for example, this widescreen infotainment system here. You can use it as a touchscreen, but you also have this rotary dial down here. It's super fast, super quick to use. The graphics are sharp, comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto as standard, all of the things you would need. And crucially, it takes about five seconds to get used to. I really like the fact that this digital instrument cluster over here is 3D, so you've got layers to the dials. It looks like an analog display until you realize actually it's not. There's so much information in there. There's so much tech packed into that. And you've got a digital heating controller system down here as well, which is my favorite digital heating control system out there. Some of them can be a right old faff to use, but this one is actually really easy. Haptic feedback, you've got all of the controls you need in easy reach, and everything just feels really intuitive and well thought out. And very nicely designed, I might say so. Also, the seats are lovely. You can get the seating position sat really nicely and you have a massage function for your bottom and your back. So you can have your lumbar stretched or your whole body stretched. I think it's such a fantastic feature and really emphasizes the luxury in this car, as does the finish and the fit of this interior. The leathers are really soft and very nice. You've got really tight stitching on the dash and on the seats. You've got this lovely ambient lighting as well in the doors and it just feels like a premium high-end product. So you don't feel like you're being shortchanged, really. You feel like you're getting so much more for your money than you would expect in a car like this. And it's not too shabby in the back either. In fact, it's really, really lovely. You've got all of these fantastic materials. Again, supportive seats, lots of leg room, lots of knee room. You have your own climate control system at the back here. It's even directional. And you can also access two USB ports down here as well and these seats are adjustable, so you can lean them right back if you wanna have a snooze on a long journey. And you've also, of course, got your central armrest with two cup holders here. It's a proper five-seater, but if there are four of you in the car, you're going to be very, very comfortable. Around the back of the GV70, we have the boot opening button up here, so it's integrated nicely, keeps it nice and clean. And as this tailgate opens automatically, you'll see the boot space is really rather generous. It has 540 liters of room, which is right up there with the class best. So everyone's gonna be pretty happy with that, I think. Although you don't get much in the way of underfloor storage, the parcel shelf is stored down here, and then you've got your tire repair kit and jack down there. So there's not any hidden storage, but there's plenty of room up here, as I can demonstrate with our family suitcases. These go in so easily. I mean, there's so much extra room that you can just throw them in without thinking about it. Honestly, this is a family size boot. No problems, no questions asked. And if you need more space, it's as simple as pulling little levers in here to fold down the back row of benches, giving you loads and loads of room. So you can't really complain about that, can we? Right, before we go, I've got one more nifty feature to show you. It parks itself. This GV70 can see a space and with the key, it will park itself. Look at that. It's not bad, is it? If you like that, or indeed, if you like the video that came before it, don't forget to click the like button below. And of course, subscribe to the channel. We have loads more content coming up, maybe even some self-parking cars, and of course, some driving at Rockingham. See you soon.